candlelit dinner at what could be an inner city restaurant. But what this diner is tucking into may surprise you. As good as always, Kev. Thank you for that. The meat on the plate wasn't once a live animal. It was grown in a lab. Far from any farms, we're in a factory in the inner Sydney suburb of Alexandria where tiny meat cells will be grown into real meat that will then be formed into pâtés and other products that will find themselves onto the plates of diners in Singapore and likely soon Australia. We look at all of the animals out there and we say, what would taste the most delicious? What would be the most nutritious for people? First cells are extracted from an animal, dead or alive, then they're multiplied in big tanks like this. And what we do is we put the cells in a nutrient broth that is essentially recreating a lot of the conditions in which cells grow in our body in a way that's very similar to what you'd see in a brewery. Eventually it forms a sludge-like paste which can then be turned into burgers, pâtés or foie gras. And we were able to achieve a really delicate, kind of more velvety, silky texture. Professor Dora Marinova from Curtin University says consumers will want to know how lab-grown meat will affect their health, while businesses are capitalising on environmental concerns. There is more awareness of the high environmental footprint of the food choices that we have, and red meat has a very, very high uh, associated greenhouse gas emissions. Lab-grown meat or cultured meat we know that it requires much less land, but there are some questions asked around the use of energy because it's quite an energy-intensive process. What's, say, the carbon footprint of meat grown here versus the same quantity you know, through conventional farming? This facility, as it scales, has a lot of potential, even over the next year or so, to be roughly 50% the carbon emissions that the same equivalent amount of chicken to produce. Aside from sustainability, the other question is around business viability. I think the biggest issue is cost and scale. This is an expensive product to make. You need special equipment, you need expensive media. You know, I've always said it'll remain a niche product, very different than, um, than a piece of steak. You know, it doesn't have that same consistency, uh, it doesn't have the same aroma, um, but you know, it's an interesting new product. Professor Paul Wood is a biotechnologist and barbecued meat enthusiast. He's tried lab-grown meat and was impressed with the product, though he says investor interest in the sector had recently fallen. We're down probably at about 10% of the capital that was available a year or two ago. So the capital has dried up and that it's, it's across the sort of alternative protein market in general, but cellular agriculture has suffered from that. With the food regulator giving the product the green light, Vow's chief operating officer is confident of the company's future, despite laying off 25% of staff earlier this year. Within the first quarter of launching here in Australia, we should be able to sell at a profitable margin. The food safety approval might seem like the biggest hurdle for this product in Australia, but the biggest question is, will consumers want to try it? Would you try lab-grown meat? Yes, I would. As long as there's uh, controls in place to make sure that the lab-grown meat's safe, why not? Yeah, it's a bit weird. Like, meat's meat, why is it grown in a lab? Yeah, I think I'd want to know more before I attempt it. <laughs> I probably wouldn't, because I'm vegan. If it's proven safe, um, yeah, I wouldn't mind giving it a go. Yeah, just stay out of curiosity and see how it compares to real meat. Lab to plate could be on the menu within months.